Hey everybody, welcome back to another Full Self Driving Beta video. My name is John and I document the progress of Full Self Driving Beta in the northwest suburbs of Chicago. Today is December 18th, 2023. I'm testing the latest version of beta, which just came in today, 2023.44.30.3. This includes bug fixes on top of the holiday update, which is basically including the recall. And the main differences include autopilot. I did a lot of testing with that on Friday. I'm still editing a video to show the before and after, so stay tuned to that. If you are interested to learn those differences, make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications button. Bell. I am taking beta through a very difficult area. I'm not expecting that there are going to be any significant changes or noticeable differences compared to previous versions, but I still love putting it to the test in this area. It's extremely challenging, even driving manually through this area. You can see I have to cut across this very busy road. It's three lanes of traffic and then go left onto the other road and then cut over another three lanes of traffic to get over into the right turn lane to turn onto this other street. Coming up here, you can see there are three cars waiting to co go out here. And then right in that parking lot, you can see on the left, another car starts coming out. And I see them very clearly. And if I were driving manually, I would have given them a little bit of a space to, you know, I would have kept a gap there to let them come out because they're also trying to get out into this area. This is kind of like a suicide move when it comes to driving. This is a really challenging maneuver. So that car there just goes out. They turn right. Take a look at this next car. They also, oh no, they're actually going left. I forgot about that. And the car there is, uh, is turning right. Oh no, they're going left as well. So <laughs> beta, did you see what they did? They actually went out there with the other person in the median. Now someone behind me is getting really impatient and they're confused. They're not sure what my car is doing. There's no turn signal. It's very, very awkward here. And they end up honking at me. And you know, I'm doing the voice over here, but <laughs> watch what happens. It, it decides to right at this moment, it decides to, after it sees a, a gap, it decides to go for it. And look at these cars coming. I don't know what it was thinking, why it thought it could go there. So now it's really awkward. I have to back up because I'm blocking traffic. And my car is being really, really strange. So it sees those cars out there in the middle. And I'm sure it's kind of wanting to get, get out there, but it's not sure exactly the timing. So now you can see we've got some cars coming. My car almost went out and hit that car. So that was not good. The reason why I'm doing a voiceover here is because while I was driving uh, the car or riding in the car, uh, I was quite a bit flustered and on edge and the tone just didn't come across very well. And I also, um, Thankfully, there weren't any obscenities. I mean, if I had been driving manually or without any camera in my car, uh, if I wasn't filming for this YouTube video, I would have been screaming and shouting and cussing and it would have been ugly. In fact, in this scenario, quite honestly, I would never actually use beta. And this is what blows my mind because in 2021, in December, Lex Friedman interviewed Elon Musk and he asked him when full self-driving would reach level four when you could basically sit back and read a book. So, you know, I'm driving manually, but you see how I had to get across all those lanes of traffic to get over here into this turn lane. So I decide before heading to my next destination, which is the mall, this is a busy time of year. This is December. So a lot of people are Christmas shopping. So I thought I'm going to take it to a very busy area. So before I do that, though, I'm going to take it back there to test two more times. So you'll see me kind of taking my car back there. But let me just continue my thought, uh, my train of thought here on this. Uh, Elon Musk had mentioned on his show in December 2021 that uh, Tesla would reach level four by the end of next year. And that would that would have been end of 2022. And look at where we are now, two years later, and we're not even close to even level three. So... This is, this is one of the things that really bothers me, okay? I don't mind the fact that Elon Musk really pushes the envelope and he, if he wasn't so assertive with his um, predictions and if, if he wasn't an innovator and extremely intelligent, then he wouldn't be where he is today and certainly the progress would be close to nothing. In fact, if you, if you don't have people like Elon Musk that are uh, reaching for the stars, 
I mean, look at the, look at the guy. He's landed rockets in the middle of the ocean. I mean, nobody has ever done that before. No one ever thought that was possible. So Elon Musk is really pushing the envelope on a lot of things. And if it weren't for him, things would be going a lot slower. I can tell you that. But his timelines are just so unrealistic. And I, it makes me wonder, does he really strongly believe that 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 can happen? But it's obvious to me that at this point in time, there's a huge disconnect between Elon Musk and his autopilot team because they are all probably very much more real about the situation. And they realize, hey, there's so many edge cases and so many hard situations. For example, in this situation, the car needs to identify this is a really difficult area to go. Maybe I should reroute to go around this area. And to be honest with you, when I first started out this this path, it did have it going in another uh, down another road. <laughs> so I kind of forced it into this situation. I will be honest with you. I don't think it would have tried to go here if I hadn't forced it. But I like I said, I like pushing it pushing the envelope. And if I were driving all by myself, I never would have tested beta in this area. It's just for this YouTube video. So I think it's important to kind of document these things and see where it is. And hopefully in the future, we'll be able to see some significant changes or improvements with its behavior. But as I'm coming out here, I'm going to just, you know, I'm, I'm still driving manually. I'm just going to bring it back to that area and then test it again. You'll see with these other tests. And the reason I'm doing this is because I have had much better success with this in the past. It is disappointing that in this case, it really failed quite miserably on the first attempt and it really has to do with other cars that are around you and you know obviously the traffic pattern at the time that you're testing and it happens to be rush hour you know it's 4 30 p.m it's actually a little bit after that it's really sad because here in chicago now it starts getting dark around four o'clock it's really depressing i hate this time of year i love when it's it's light out at 9 p.m <laughs> but I, you know, and I, I prefer testing in the middle of the day. You can see a lot more things. You can see, you know, the cars and everything around you. And it's just my personal preference to, to be filming during the day as well. So here I come out and I'm getting ready to start this challenge again. I, and as you can see, it, it had me going another way. You can kind of see behind it was trying to route me another way. But now that I, I confirmed that it's taking me in that direction, I am doing something I probably shouldn't be doing. I'm filming with my other uh, camera just so you can see the other traffic coming. So, um, you know, obviously I'm, I've got my other hand completely free and I have my feet ready to take over. So I don't view this as being particularly unsafe because I'm on high alert and ready to take over in a moment's notice. Coming up here, you can see now it's it's creeping out. It seems to stop way back there, and then it comes right up to the stop sign. Basically, it's ignoring the fact that it needs to stop again, which typically at this point, you're kind of required to stop, I think. Even the stop sign's facing the other way. I don't know if that's part of the issue, but uh, you can see I'm kind of hanging out in traffic. Thankfully, I'm not too far out. It, it didn't create a problem. And then it comes out here and really accelerates and at this point because it needs to cross over three lanes of traffic i'm giving it um, enough space to be able to do that but i got lucky i'll be honest with you there were no cars there and a lot of time cars are flying up to to that light so i i have to give it credit here for being able to pull it off but again in that situation beta really shouldn't allow itself to try to go there now look at this all these cars are coming and they're piling into this single lane and my car is trying to go <laughs> and if there was enough of a gap it would go and then another car would be there and i would be in in trouble so that that is a, a an issue that i've observed and it, and it continues to be an issue uh, a lot of times you'll have cars that have a green arrow like that a left arrow and there are two lanes and my car will still try to turn right when it's supposed to be yielding for those cars. So it's like it doesn't realize that they have the right of way. I'm not really sure, but Beta should be a little bit more intelligent about that. I've observed that behavior multiple times. It's just not, not the appropriate thing to do. 
So I'm testing it one last time. Uh, you know, third time's a charm. <laughs> I'm driving manually here to take it back over to that same area so I can try one one more time. And, uh, you know, this, this next time, it was also successful, but I end up getting a little bit lucky with the traffic pattern. So let me fast forward it here. All right, so I turn it on. I'm behind this utility vehicle, and I'm curious if it's going to be able to go around them. So it's not recognizing the flashing lights. Sometimes with emergency vehicles, you do get a notification. It happens mostly on the highways. It does end up going around them. It was pretty close to them at one point. You can see there it said, pay attention to the road. I think it notices the light, which I have strapped to the seatbelt, which is allowing you to see the steering wheel a lot more clearly. Here it comes out, and again, it just accelerates straight through. It saw that there were no cars there. Well, it almost saw, and then it, it hesitated a little bit, and then got into that creep zone and then finally decided to go out. So a little bit uncomfortable. I will have to say that it was not you know, fluid or smooth to the point where I felt like, yes, that was great. Now, does that happen where it's perfectly fluid and smooth sometimes? Yes, it does. And there are a number of times when it really impresses me. And I, I filmed in this location before and had great success. So it really, uh, I, I want to say it depends on the traffic. It doesn't depend on the time of day because night uh, driving is very similar to day driving. So I eliminate these uh, waypoints here at this, at this point in the drive. So I just take it now directly over to the mall. So I drive through uh, this relatively busy street. And again, it's uh, approaching rush hour. And it goes down, uh, this is Higgins Road in Schaumburg, Illinois. So it takes it all the way down here without any problems. So at this point, it's turning left onto this road, and I love how it gets over. It turned on the turn signal at the right time, and then since the next turn is going to be a right turn in a relatively short distance, it chooses the right-left turn lane. And I love how it does that. It's It's been doing that for a very long time. I want to say in the middle of version 10, they updated that. Before, it would kind of choose whichever lane it wanted but now the lane selection on these turns is is done really really well so there is some planning uh, when it comes to knowing where to go with different turns which is nice to see but it's just not consistent and a lot of times it really shouldn't attempt certain areas because i believe it should know when it's going to fail and when it can be successful all right, so we are in the right turn lane here, and you're going to see here in a moment the light changes to a red light, and my car slows down and stops. I would have gone at that moment. There's someone right behind me. Thankfully, it didn't stutter too much. It went through and followed through, but definitely not exactly what I would have done. At this point, the car indicates it turns on its left turn signal. It says changing into a faster lane which is interesting because we were already going the max speed limit. I didn't feel like it was completely necessary to, to go around this person. But, you know, coming up here after we cross over this intersection, we will be turning left. So, you know, it would more appropriately have been, here again it says changing into a faster lane. I don't know why it's so assertive to go around people right now. Uh, and, and especially in this situation, it didn't really make sense to go around them because right after we cross over this road, we need to get in the left turn lane. So this makes it a little bit awkward because now it's like, okay, I have to cut in front of that person. Uh, and I wasn't really paying attention as I was driving, like that it was going around these slower moving cars. Here you can see changing lanes to follow route. So we just basically cut that person off to get in front of them, which is a little bit crazy to me and wasn't necessary. Certainly, I wouldn't have done that if I was driving manually. But we wait here, and then after passing over, I forgot it was two, two roads, after crossing over the second road, we will be turning left into the mall parking lot. And this has always been a challenging area. There are some bushes in the middle, and 
in the past, especially in the summer, it has misinterpreted those bushes and actually tried to go like right into them. I don't know what was happening, but it was a major failure that I did take over from. So at this point, I'm, you know, contemplating how it's going to handle it because I haven't tested this area in, a, in quite some time. So I'm, I'm very curious to see what happens. As you can see, the apply slight turning force to the steering wheel, that message is a lot more prominent on the display, as well as the please pay attention to the road messages. So that's all thanks to the National Highway Trans Transportation Administration. All right, so we're proceeding forward here. And then right here is when we get in the left turn lane. And this is an interesting one. So we wait for a gap. And as soon as that gap presents itself, so someone's right behind me, or they, they start coming up right behind me. And it waited for that car, thankfully. Now look at this, the light turns yellow. I'm almost stuck in the intersection. And then it starts going on a red light, which is good. That's what it needs to do. And then it proceeds through. So I was really happy with that. Uh, in the past, it would hesitate sometimes and flat out stop. Uh, or I, a lot of times I wouldn't even let it stop. I'd have to press it through. But I was willing to trust it enough there uh, because someone they weren't like right on my tail. But sometimes someone's immediately behind me because... When, when the light turns yellow, people are trying to pile through the intersection and they're, everyone stays really close to each other. So if you're slowing down for some unknown reason, you know, it's very, it's very easy to get rear-ended. So I'm always very, very careful of that when people are around me. And that's probably, as I've mentioned many, many times, that's probably the biggest issue that I have with full self-driving is the mixed signals and the confusion it creates for other people around me, especially those that are right behind me. At this point, I'm driving manually. I'm trying to take it over to Legoland, which is this interesting area where usually you have uh, quite a few pedestrians. It's awfully cold outside. It's like 28 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus two degrees Celsius. So I, I'm a little bit doubtful that there's gonna be a lot of people around. So I pull over here, I'm trying to reroute it to get it to go in the right area. There is somebody who has these really awesome Christmas lights on their car. And I had to say something to them because it was really cool. You get a nice view of it right there. I thought that was so cool. So I do pull over next to him and say, uh, hey, I love your lights. I love those lights, that's, that's awesome. Funny. That is badass. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Looks great. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm taking it over, like I said, to the Legoland area, and there's this little, you can see kind of like a, a semi-circle. So it goes through there, and like I said, usually I've had some good interactions with people, and there's usually quite a bit of activity in this area. And we're at the stop sign here, slowing it down. And we're going to turn right and hope that we have some excitement. Let's see what happens. Comes through here. We got a parked car on the right. And as we come through here, there is nobody outside. And then right up here, we have two cars and a Tesla. And the Tesla starts to move. I'm thinking, oh, they're going to try to get out. But thankfully, they didn't indicate they were turning into my lane and my car just kind of ignored them it looks like there's some construction there on the right that was not very eventful uh, <laughs> so it was wasn't what i was expecting but uh like i said i've had i've had really good fun experiences driving through there with full self-driving so i try to replicate that taking it over through the mall it, it's tricky because the mall, you just do a big circle around the mall, and it depends on... I, this is interesting. There's a truck there. I did not have Beta engaged when it was driving over that area, uh, but it would have been interesting to see how it handled that with those people coming walking around that truck. 
But like I was saying with the mall, it it's hard to, to document or film in there because you really have to go like directly into the parking lot right up next to the mall to get a lot of variety. So I'm coming back out onto the main road. I do turn it on and I'm curious to see how it gets through here. Now watch what happens here. Someone's coming up behind me. It stops way back here. You can see the stop sign is further up, a lot further up. And then instead of coming up to the stop sign and stopping, it proceeds through and just goes straight through. So that's basically running a stop sign. That's not really what it should should do. It, it technically did stop, but it stopped in the wrong spot. And I'm sure the person behind me was wondering what's going on. But this day and age with everybody on their cell phones while they're driving, you know, people are kind of like a little bit dismissive of disruptive driving behavior because a lot of people will do stupid things. So <laughs> unless they're stopped for a really long period of time, then someone's going to get really mad. But they probably just assumed, oh, that person was distracted. But nope, nope, not distracted at all. It was just beta being beta. All right, going through this road, there's really not much more for this drive. Uh, so you're just going to see it going straight down this road. To be honest with you, there's really not much excitement for the rest of this. And uh, to sum this up, I really haven't noticed any significant changes. Oh, you can see the emergency vehicle. There's no representation of that on the screen still. Uh, and on the highway, you do have, sometimes you'll get false triggers. It'll, like if you have um, some barriers in the middle of the road, like between the two um, directions, uh, with the lights, especially if uh, certain cars on the other side have LED lights, it will false trigger and think that it's an emergency vehicle. But no, the, the only time you get emergency vehicles legitimately is when they're on the highway. You still don't have them here on, on these side streets, at least not that I've observed. But yeah, uh, overall, in summary, uh, there, there aren't any significant changes, anything that's noticeable, at least from my standpoint. Chuck Cook was mentioning that he thought with this latest version it was going around manhole covers. I have not observed that uh, through quite a bit of testing uh, here today uh, in the evening and just before it got dark. So I'm not, um, I, I don't think there's any, you know, significant new behaviors. Uh, and like I said, I have a video coming up showing the major differences with autopilot. The holiday update includes a bunch of little things like you're going to see here, I decide to test out the um, blind spot camera. So I don't have the camera feature turned on in my car. So I go into the menu here real quick just to toggle it on. Um, and once, once you toggle that on, every time you turn on the turn signal, the image pops up on the screen. I don't get a lot of utility out of it, so I just don't keep it on. And I don't know, I for some stupid reason, I think in my head that it's taking up processing power unnecessarily, so I just, I just always keep it off. But I do do a test here coming up. I do do a test coming up here. Uh, a, a car comes up on my left, and I decide to turn it on purposefully when they're in the way so that you can see the new red gradient. So that is new. Um, other things, little visualization enhancements. See, there it is. You can see the red. Kind of neat, right? So now that car is thinking I'm really going to turn left when I have no intention to really do that. But now that they're out of the blind spot, that red gradient goes away. So that's kind of a nice thing. Uh, obviously, you get the more prominent display of pay attention to the road and put force on the steering wheel. The first couple of times you use the full self-driving or the autopilot, you're going to get the pay attention to the road pop up immediately on the screen, like right when you start using it. So just know that that is temporary. It's only going to happen for the first couple of times you use it. It's just kind of a, 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 a broad display or kind of a bold display of saying, hey, we're watching you or <laughs> you better pay attention. Something's new here. I think for autopilot people, they're going to be really shocked by that. Um, but don't don't think that it's like you're doing something wrong because I think the, the full self-driving folks are they're used to feeling like they've been reprimanded for not paying attention when they get that message. But in reality, it can't that's not 
the case at all. It can't be for the, from the truth. So, so don't think that you were like abusing the system necessarily. Uh, the autopilot folks are just going to be like, oh, hey, that's new. And they're going to be really surprised when they start getting strikes. And as you know, five strikes and you get it taken away. Um, it's only taken away for a week now, which isn't that bad. I mean, a week timeout, that's not bad at all. It was literally months before where you had to wait for another update before you could get the, the features back again, which was really annoying considering that back then it was $15,000 to to purchase the software in the first place. And the cameras actually get more and more sensitive as well as you use it. I've noticed that after you get two strikes, uh, actually after you get three strikes and you're down to two left, no, after two, after two, two, two strikes and you have three left, it becomes a lot more sensitive. So my advice to people, if you're worried about the, the camera and getting strikes, my advice is to very proactively put force on the steering wheel. The more proactive you are about it, the less strict it's going to be. And don't use a phone. Absolutely do not use a phone. That will trigger it. And stay, continue looking at the road. And that's really important. With autopilot, you can look at the screen quite a bit. I got away with staring at the screen for over 20 seconds. With full self-driving, you can't do that. If you look at the screen for like seven seconds, it'll start complaining. So it's less strict with the autopilot compared to full self-driving. So that's at least a, one good thing, but it's going to take quite a bit of getting used to for people with, with autopilot because previously the in-cabin camera wasn't used at all. So it's going to be, you know, a learning curve for those people. And that's why I really want to help everybody learn how to, how to avoid getting timeouts or strikes. So the rest of this drive is really uh, uneventful. So I'm just going to close it out from here. Thanks again, everybody, so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. I will be doing uh, a series of videos coming out on different maintenance techniques for the uh, front upper control arms. There is a definite quality issue with the upper control arms on the older Model 3s where people have, have witnessed or experienced squeaky control arms. And it has a lot to do with the windshield wiper fluid draining out onto the left one in particular. And there's a seal that's kind of missing on the top. So it can get into the ball joint, create a lot of noise and very annoying. So I spent quite a bit of time trying to fix that on my own. And I documented the whole process. So I, I'm really looking forward to sharing that with all of you. And then also I got the Cyber Quad recently and I did an unboxing video with that. It'll be a little bit fun to see that. I should have some time coming up through the holidays here. So looking forward to kind of releasing those videos. Those don't get very many views, unfortunately. Although they're a lot of fun for me to create, they're also time consuming. Uh, but I, I like those because they kind of live on in eternity and people can use them, you know, 10 years down the road. There's, it's still most likely going to be valid. A lot of these self-driving videos, they kind of get lost in the mix because no one's going to watch a video five years from now on uh, version 2023.40.33.3 <laughs> or 44 or whatever the version is. I oh, Yeah, it's 2023.44.30.3. But anyway, I'm rambling now. Thanks so much again for watching. Have a great day. And thanks, a huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters. I love you guys to death. And I hope you guys have a restful and relaxing holiday. See you.